we continue our worship, we have turned in our Bibles to Ephesians and chapter 1 and verse 3. Uh, each book of the Bible has its own special theme and message. Uh, even though it may deal with, with many other themes and topics, uh, each one has a specific theme. For instance, uh, Genesis is the book of beginnings. And as you go through Genesis, you uh, may not recognize it all the time. You do at the beginning because it says in the beginning, uh, God created the heavens and the earth. But you can see it when you go through the rest of the scripture that many, many truths uh, are found. Their beginning is in Genesis. Uh, we might say it in seed form. In other words, just, uh, just a little touch here or there. Uh, but then they blossom out later on into the rest of Scripture. Um, Matthew is the book of the kingdom. Uh, so when the genealogy right at the beginning of Matthew uh, is given to us of Jesus Christ, it centers on the fact that he is the son of David. And throughout the book, as you are reading, you will see an emphasis uh, on the kingdom. Jesus talks a lot about the kingdom. Uh, and then the book of Galatians is a book on liberty. And the reason is because the Galatian Christians uh, had some, uh, what they were called Judaizers and other individuals who came into the church, uh, either permanently or visiting them, and began to say to them, well, you've got to become uh, Jewish in the sense that you have to be circumcised and you have to keep all the uh, dietary laws and all these things and they were trying to put them in the bondage and so as Paul wrote to them uh, he shared with them that uh, Christ has set you free uh, and you're you're not to be in that bondage uh, yes we still uh, uh, obey God's commands uh, that's obvious but uh, we're not in bondage to all of these things uh, you, you don't become uh, Jewish, that's, uh, that's not what God has called you to do. Uh, that both Jews and Gentiles, when they come to know Christ, are set free. And Jesus said, when he sets us free, we are free indeed. And uh, Ephesians, uh, its theme is told us right here in verse 3, uh, and that is the Christian's riches in Christ says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We are blessed in Christ. Let's have a word of prayer uh, as we continue our worship with the Lord. Heavenly Father, we will never be able in all eternity to thank you enough for all of your blessings. And I thank you, Lord, that our blessings are not just today, but tomorrow and for all of eternity. I thank you, Lord, for the blessings you have given us. When we, when we take the time to think that you have blessed us in creating us, you have blessed us in placing us where we are, uh, on a planet with such uh, beauty, uh, even though it's marred by sin, it's still such a beautiful and gorgeous place. Uh, you have blessed us with our families, uh, with our friends, uh, with uh, our, the provisions that you give us. Uh, there is so many blessings, Lord. Uh, we, we would not have the time or even capacity to be able to name them all but you have truly blessed us. And so we rejoice in your blessing. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we will uh, not only think about uh, your blessings, but how we might bless you. And that is a question that's a little hard to answer, but uh, I trust that we will this morning. Uh, we pray, Lord, that our focus will continue be on thee. Thou will be glorified. I do ask thee, Lord, to, uh, to bless thy people uh, through the word of God. And we thank you. We, we praise you. Holy Spirit, be in control of both my uh, 
of heart and mind and lip and also each one of us. Uh, may we open our ears and hear Jesus and we open our eyes and see him. We pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Well, he begins by saying here very clearly, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God. How can we bless God? Uh, God is so great, and we are, we are truly so small. How can we bless God? How could I possibly bless him? When God blesses us, he bestows upon us so, so much, so many gifts. Uh, he, he, his blessings are abounding. Uh, his love his gifts for us. He enriches our souls. He, he does so much for us every single day. I often think about the fact that I, I wonder how many things that God does for us, how many blessings he gives us, and we aren't even aware of it. Uh, they, they pass by, they happen, and we don't know it. Uh, I trust that when we get to heaven, God is going to just give us a, a beautiful view of all the things that he did for us that we we didn't even know uh, but they're there uh, we know that but the things that we're aware of the things that we see the things that we uh, are blessed uh, are, are are so wonderful and incredible but how can I bless God how can you bless God uh, I can't add to his perfection uh, I can't add to his blessedness in fact uh, God says to us in Psalm 50, he says, If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world is all mine and its fullness. For every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle and a thousand hills. Everything belongs to God. Everything. Every star, every planet, everything on this earth, all of us, everything belongs to him. So what could I give him? Uh, he blesses us by giving us gifts. He blesses us by taking care of us and meeting our needs. How can I do that for God? I, I can't do it. I can't. He has everything. So how can we bless God? Well, we can bless God. He doesn't tell us to do something and then say, all right, now you can't do this. Uh, and so blessed be God. I believe three ways that we can bless God. We can bless God by our praises, our prayers, our words, our thanksgiving and appreciation. Take your Bible for a moment and turn back to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Again, our praises uh, as we pray the words that we speak from our mouths to others our thanksgiving and our appreciation in Psalm 103 if you'll begin at verse 1 notice bless the Lord O my soul that bless the Lord I should bless the Lord and all that within me bless his holy name Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. Praise the Lord. Who heals all of your diseases. Hallelujah. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. Bless the Lord and forget not all of his blessings. We bless him when we praise him. When we come to church and we sing praises on the God, we're blessing him. Uh, when you're at home and, and you sing unto the Lord, uh, maybe a chorus or a part of a song, a, a, a gospel song or something, or, or even a stanza or anything, you, and, or just, just talking about him, you are blessing him uh, when you when you praise him when you give him thanksgiving you know the bible says in prayer and thanksgiving 
Uh, we're not just to pray, but we are to thank him. But when we pray, when we come before his throne, it may be a short prayer, it may be a long one, whatever it is, we are actually blessing God. Mm -hmm. And then our appreciation. When our hearts just raise up and God, I am so appreciative of everything you do for me. That blesses God. And we can praise God in thanksgiving. We can praise him in gratitude remembering his gracious hand upon us. Number two, we bless God by loving him. Moses said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And Jesus Christ repeats that. He tells us the same thing in Matthew chapter 22. Jesus said this, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. We are to love him. We are to love him with the total of ourselves. When we love, and we, we know that uh, there's different kinds of love, uh, and uh, we know that there is a friendship love, right? We have friends, and we, we love them, uh, but uh, it only goes so far. Uh, there, there, there comes a limit to that kind of love, right? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't go as far as other kinds of love. And then we have family love. Uh, we have that love for each other that, that just comes really very, very naturally. Uh, when, when, when we uh, are married, we, we, we love our spouses. Uh, when we have children, we, we love our children. As our children come into the world, we, we just love them. We don't sit there and go like, hmm, I don't know. I, I have to think about this. <laughs> I, am I going to love this one or not? I, no, we don't do that. And I am amazed. At, I think the thing when we, when we see a, a parent, who has a child who uh, has some deformity or uh, some uh, other kind of problem or something, uh, and how they just lavish love on them. Mm -hmm. And they, they just love them. With, and, <clears throat> and so many other people, sad to say today, you know, would say to them, well, you need to get rid of that child. Uh, you need to, to abort them before they're born, or you need to, and we're getting to the place, dearly beloved, that, that people are going to say, well, you know, if they can't really function in life, we need to get rid of them even when they're born. Uh, but the natural affection is that we love a child. Now the Bible says as we get closer to the end times, that natural affection is going to disappear. And we're seeing that happen. But we have that kind of love. Uh, and then we have the, the special love uh, of, uh, of, of, of a spouse. Uh, for one another. And then there's that agape love, that love that we choose. And that's the love that we're to love God with. We're to choose to love him with our total being, with everything, everything that we have. And, and we're commanded to love the Lord our God, but we can love him only because he loved us first, John tells us. We can bless God by loving God. Uh, he is our Heavenly Father. He is so great. He is so mighty. Uh, and He is our Father in Heaven. And we bless Him through our love for Him. And number three, we can bless God by our service, uh, by our ministry, uh, by our compassionate remembrance of God's people. I don't know if you remember this, but Jesus, talking about the end times, said this. He said, Inasmuch as you did it unto one of the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Matthew chapter 24. In other words, Jesus says, Someday as we stand before him, and uh, maybe the question comes up, Well, what did I do for you, Jesus? I, I couldn't clothe you. I couldn't feed you. I couldn't, I, I couldn't do what... Mary and Martha and Lazarus did, how they always prepared a place for you to stay and give you a meal and everything. I've never been able to do this. And Jesus says this, 
When you do it to the least of these, you've done it to me. When you minister to others, when you serve others, you're doing it to Christ, but you're doing it with the right heart and attitude. Uh, when, when you come to church and, and you, you clean the building, and you might say, well, you know, okay, so I'm cleaning the building, you know. But you're doing it to others. Uh, you are actually blessing God. Um, when you serve in some way, whatever it might be, you are actually blessing God when you do that. And we can do that. We can do it with our love, with our friendship to others. When we minister to others, when we show compassion and ministry to those who Christ died for. We are to minister to each other. Remember in Ephesians, let me, let me just read this because uh, we get a little confused here. In Ephesians chapter, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, it talks about the gifted ones that God gives. He says in verse 11, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Uh, and I think it's interesting, and I, I think it's important we remember that, that the minister, <laughs> which is a misnomer, uh, is to do the ministry. But the body of Christ is to do the ministry. Every single one of us are ministers in Christ for the edifying of the body of, body of Christ. So we are to minister to each other, and we're to minister to those outside, those we come into contact with. And when we do that, we are blessing God. And so when he says here uh, in Ephesians in chapter 1, and, and he says in verse 3, he says, Blessed be the God. Blessed be God. Bless God. That's the first thing. You and I have the privilege the joy to be able to bless God. <clears throat> Further all, he says, bless be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is in Christ when we that we can come to the Father. It is in Christ that we are able to bless him because we cannot come to God we cannot know him personally. We cannot have a personal relationship with him unless we come to him through Jesus Christ. We have to be saved. We have to be born again. And then we can come to God. It is in Christ that we come to know the Father. Uh, it is through him we are blessed as his children. Uh, what is the Father like? Anybody here seen him? Uh, no. Now, you can go to, uh, to Italy, uh, you can go to Rome, you can go into the Sistine Chapel. It's a little higher than this one. <laughs> and it's got a, a rounded dome on it, a rounded roof. And uh, Michelangelo uh, painted most of that. Not all of it. There are places that others kind of filled in. It's kind of like painting by the numbers in places. But he laid on his back in scaffolding and he painted and you can, the best way to view it uh, is probably on the internet, but the best way to view it is laying on the floor. <clears throat> you can't always do that, the crowds are kind of big, but you lay on the floor and in the middle of the whole thing, there's God. Well, Michelangelo's idea of God, uh, the Catholic Church at the time's idea of what God looks like, but we don't know what God looks like. We don't know what he looks like. Uh, this idea that he's got this flowing beard and and you know, and he's kind of a gruff looking. If you, you see the picture of him, he doesn't look real happy. Uh, in some ways, I don't blame him, but uh, he doesn't look real happy. But what is God like? The Bible says that no man uh, can see his face. If you and I would look at God, if we would look at him, his glory, the light about him would blind us. Now, here on earth, if we stand out on a really good day without any clouds or anything in the middle of summer when we're the closest to the sun, and we look at the sun, if you do it a little too long, it, it blinds you, right? Imagine if you were on Mercury. 
heat. Uh, we're a long way from the sun compared to Mercury. If you are on Mercury, I would assume that the moment your eyes even, even barely open, you would have no more sight. It would, you would totally lose everything. It would, it would burn your retina. Imagine, you can't look on God. No one can look on God. You remember when Moses wanted to see God? And I, I, I really appreciate that. I appreciate that Moses said, I, I want to see you. Because you know, we're, we're human. We're, we're in a body. We, we want to see. He said, God, I want to see you. And so God literally cut a rock, a huge boulder, and he split it. And then he placed Moses into that. And he said he was going to pass by. Uh, but as he did, he put his hand over the rock. Now, he doesn't have a hand, but that's the only way we would understand it. And he, he put that so that Moses <coughs> could see. And then as he passed by, as he left, then he pulled his hand away. And he just saw the passing glory of God. Moses came down and had to put a veil on his face because his, the glow of his face was so incredible that the people couldn't look at him. But there's another reason, because as time went on, it lessened and lessened and lessened. You know, someday when we're in God's presence, we'll never do that. We'll never do that. Hebrews chapter 12 says that God is a consuming fire. Then how can we know him? We know him through Jesus Christ. When we see Christ, that is when we know Christ, when we go into the word of God and search out and learn of Christ and we know of him, we are seeing God. Jesus said, when, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so when we see him in the word of God, that is seeing the Father. So everything you see about Christ is telling you about God the Father. How did he treat people? Was he mean? Was he nasty? Or did he treat them with love and compassion? Even the Pharisees, even though he had to rebuke him, even though he had to say to him, listen, what you're doing is wrong. He did it with compassion. And look at Judas. Imagine that. He, here he has the choice of all these disciples. There's a lot of them, just, not just the 12. He had them and he chose each one individually. He spent a whole night in prayer before he chose them. And then he went and chose each one. And the last and the end of the list is this man by the name of Judas Iscariot. Did God know everything? Absolutely. Did Jesus know everything? Absolutely. But he chose him. He chose him out of love. He gave him the opportunity, the privilege, to be able to walk with him and be in his presence, even though he knew he would betray him, even though he knew that he would turn on him. He still loved him. That's how he is. That's how God is. Compassion. Love. Sacrifice. Giving. <coughs> open. Inviting. Come on to me, all you that heavy laden, and I will give you rest, he said. That's the picture of God. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, that is face to face. And the Word was God, and he was in the beginning with God. Jesus Christ is God. He was with God, and he reveals God to us. And then Paul says to us, Jesus Christ has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Listen to that again. 
Jesus Christ has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Now, these are not blessings uh, that are going to happen sometime later. You know, we often have to wait for blessings. Maybe when you were growing up uh, and maybe, you, you know, you remember Christmas coming. And maybe mom and dad promised you something. Uh, or you, uh, maybe you still do. I, I hope I don't hurt anybody here, but uh, maybe you still think Santa Claus is coming or something. <laughs> <clears throat> and you were anticipating, you were waiting for it. And, and, and you just, you were so excited. And, and, and if you were like my dear wife, you went and found out. Ask her someday about that story. But, uh, but you, you know, and, and you just can't wait to, to see these things. But you have to wait, don't you? Uh, and, and it gets worse and worse because we start putting out Christmas things before Thanksgiving now. But we're waiting for them. But none of the blessings of God, of Jesus Christ, we have to wait for. Uh, they're not just future things. Yes, we have future blessings. But the God's blessings are now. If you are in Christ, right now you are in the heavenlies and you are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Notice what he says. He says it clearly here. He says, who are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. That's in the present tense, as we would put it, all right? That's right now. <clears throat> Our resources are in God are not simply promises. They are possessions of every believer. All of these things we possess now. We have them now. We don't have to go looking for them. We don't have to wait for them. God cannot give us, this may sound a little strange to you, but I want you to think, God cannot give us more than he's already given us in Christ. Think about that. He has given us everything. You know, one of the things we're seeing on Wednesday night is that, aren't we? As we're seeing what happens when we get saved. Uh, there is nothing more to be received. Our need, therefore, is not listen, listen, our need is not to be looking for something more, but to do something more with what we have. For what we've received. God has given us in Christ riches of glory. You know, it's better to have a new heart than a new coat. It's better to sit at the table of the Lord, as we'll do in a little bit, than to sit at the banquet of the wealthiest person in all the world. Now, many Christians continually ask God for what he's already given them. <clears throat> and maybe maybe you've done this at times. For instance, they'll pray that God will give them more love. Although we read in Romans chapter 5, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. God's love has been poured out into our love. How much more love more do we need? We already have it. It's just that we don't use it. We don't share it. We don't pour it out like he's poured it out to us. We've got it. It's there. Let's pour it out. Pour it out to people who live around, live around us. Pour it out in our own home. In our own relationships with whoever we're, we're working with, whoever we're acquainted with, let's, let's pour out that love. And then so many people pray for peace. <clears throat> but what did Jesus say? My peace, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus Christ said, I have given you not just peace, 
But he says, I've given you my peace. There is no other perfect peace. We see in this world every single day, somewhere, somebody is, we need peace, right? We want to see peace in Europe right now, don't we? We want to see peace for, the, for those dear people in Ukraine. What a terrible, 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 wicked things that are going on there. You know, most of us, not all, but most of us, we didn't see all the terrible things that went on. Ray did. Ray, Ray lived through those days and those times and, and how uh, devastating it was all over. But we're seeing it for ourselves, aren't we? And we want peace. And, and, and Lord willing, there will be some peace that will come, but will it last? Absolutely not. It's not going to last. I'm not a pessimist about this. I'm being a realist. How many times has our president, whoever he might be, stepped forward and gathered together with the Israelites and, and the Arabs and said, oh, we got a peace treaty here. And we're at peace. How many times? I don't know. My lifetime, they just seem to do it. It seems like, you know, okay, now that's one of the jobs I've got to do is broker this peace. And sometimes it doesn't last a day or so when it's already gone. But Jesus says, my peace I leave you with you. He gives us his peace. That is a lasting peace. That is a deep peace. That's a peace that passes all understanding. Keeps our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then people pray for happiness and joy. I want to be happier. I wouldn't doubt if we took a poll of this country that most people, that would probably be one of the best things. I just want to be happy. Just want to be happy. Well, Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may re might remain in you and that your joy may be full. How much? Full. full. Not just a little bit. Not just, well, I'll give you a little joy. He says it's going to be full. Hallelujah. And then people ask for strength. I'm sure you've asked for strength. I've asked for strength. But Paul said this. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. We have the strength we need to go through whatever we have to go through. Every moment of every day. The strength is there. We are richer being an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ than if we were the son of the wealthiest person in the world. After all, the Bible tells us if we would gain the whole world. Imagine that. And there are people who are trying to gain the whole world. But lost their own soul. We lose everything. <clears throat> we have all we need in Christ. Amen. All we need. Mm -hmm. And whether we... And we ought to display these blessings. <coughs> whether we suffer, or whether we're sick, whether we are in agony, whether we are discouraged because of others, whether we're going through difficult times and situations, whatever the Bible calls upon us as Christians to rise up and as it says in the Psalms, to sing psalms in the night, mm -hmm. to be able, to matter where we're going through, to be able to give praise and blessing to God in all things. <clears throat> and we're to be happy in the Lord because we are blessed in the Lord. All spiritual blessings. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in
Can you bless God? Do I need to repeat the sermon? <laughs> of course we can. We can bless God. Amen. And we can know God. Right? Right? And we have all that we need in Jesus Christ. He has blessed us with everything. Praise his name. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you and praise you this morning. Just thank you, Lord, that as we came together this morning, we were able to bless thee. And that as we go through our days, we can bless thee. As we sit down to read your word, meditate upon it, we can bless thee. As we pray, we can bless thee. As we sing praises of thee, we can bless thee. As we give you thanks, we can bless thee. We can bless thee. As we love thee, as we love thee with all of our hearts, we can bless thee. We want to love thee more. We want to bless thee more. And Lord, as we serve others, as we do ministry, we bless thee. And I thank you, Lord, that we can know you. No, we will not see thy face. We will not even see, Lord, we know as Moses, thy glory passing by. Mm -hmm. But when we look at Jesus, when we meditate upon who he is in the word of God. We see you. We know you. And we praise you. And then, Lord, I thank you for every blessing we have. For all the material things, but most of all for the spiritual things that cannot be purchased, it cannot be ordered, it cannot be received except through Jesus Christ. And how we praise you, Lord, for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we give you the glory in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen. and amen.